Hello, Taurus, and welcome to your 2025 annual horoscope. So here, this is a really busy year. As always, we always have fresh and new energies every single year. However, this time around, with Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, they are all moving into a different sign temporarily, giving us a little taste of what we can expect in the upcoming um, decade. All right, so let's start from the first transits of course as we begin the year mars is still retrograde in leo and then on the 6th 7th of january it will retrograde back into cancer so here this retrograde here in 2025 will primarily affect your cancer house which is your third house so this generally indicates mars is the planet of energy motivation action with mars retrograde in your third house you might experience uh, transportation delays this could be also about uh, miscommunication, misunderstanding. So communicate as clearly as you can during these first initial months of the year, because there is a tendency to be more forgetful than usual, or perhaps more impulsive, more impatient even, but at the same time, it's a great time for returning to some old um, intellectual projects from the past you might be reconnecting with people you haven't seen for quite some time from your community with your siblings for example this is also a good time for revisiting uh, courses study materials that perhaps you didn't have a chance to complete uh, in the past so anything connected to communication mental stimulation interactions with others here this is all highlighted during the retrograde phase of mars but at the same time this is about revisiting re-evaluating reassessing now on 29th of january on the other hand um, the nodes will shift into brand new signs pisces and virgo and they will remain here for the next 18 months so that's your fifth and the 11th house i'll just give you the overall influence because with the eclipses we need to look at the bigger picture we already had one eclipse in pisces back in september 2024 in 2025 we've got three eclipses uh, in these on these axes and this isn't the end because they will uh, reoccur again in 2026 so what it is uh, is that uh, with um 20, in 2025, 2026, you will go through friendship changes. This could be related to changes. Um, generally, some people are shifting away. Very often, someone is eclipsed out of our lives. So we lose a friend maybe because um, they relocate, their circumstances change, or they have a baby, you have a baby, and generally don't really have time anymore to meet as usually as often as you used to. But overall here, yes, friendship changes. But at the same time, this is also about uh, regaining the inner confidence, healing the inner child. These eclipses are also, and the nodal, the nodes, the nodes uh, as well, because apart from the eclipses, uh, the, the nodes transiting the fifth and the 11th house for the um, next 18 months following the 29th of January, 2025, we will also have the eclipses here. And uh, we've got the lunar eclipse in Virgo, in March, and then we've got a solar eclipse in Virgo and a lunar eclipse in Pisces in September. So there's a lot of activity in these areas of life. So what, as I mentioned, um, friendship changes, new people coming into your life, maybe some old connections shifting away, you'll be redefining your goals, your dreams for the future. But at the same time, this is also about reinventing your life, reinventing yourself. This is about new hobbies and interests as well. So you will likely, you will likely be starting uh, a new hobby throughout this time, a new passion, something that will bring spark into your life. This is also about regaining the inner confidence in yourself, in your skills, in your talents. This is about being more authentic, more real more free when it comes to self-expression, uh, for example, as well. But having said that, many individuals also, Taurus Rising, will also have a baby. Conception, family planning, this is very much also highlighted with that five house activation. So if you've been wanting to uh, conceive or thinking about um having your own family then this might be very much the case during these eclipses cycle and the nodal influence as well all right 
Now we have one Venus retrograde this year in Aries and in Pisces. So it starts in Aries in March and it ends in Pisces in April. And it starts in your 12th house. It ends in your 11th house. As you can see, the game got that eight, uh, 11th house influence. And here, I think uh, what it is, is that it's a very creative time. It's a time when you might be um, become very spiritual. There is a lot of uh, energy connected to spirituality, self-improvement, self-discovery. But at the same time, it could be also about reconnecting with an ex a romantic partner or perhaps with a friend uh, with whom you have that chemistry and uh, or that romantic um, sensation and maybe you know nothing happened but they might return back into your life during the duration of this uh, retrograde phase i see the sun is out now and the, the light is not great anymore all right so i close the curtains so it's uh better all right so yeah so the eclipses are ah, the venus venus retrograde so um yeah at the same time you might be also reconnecting with friends girlfriends um female friends that perhaps you haven't been in touch for quite some time venus is connected to feminine uh, energy now as we move forward uh, we've got uh, saturn will move into aries uh, but it will only reach the first degree of aries and that will be on May the 25th until September the 1st. All right, so on March the 30th until October the 22nd, we'll have a little flavor of Mar uh, Neptune and Aries energy, which will be very active between 2026 and 2039. Aries uh, here, this is your 12th house. So generally um, with uh, Aries energies uh, in your chart um, you will be ending a lot of um, cycles chapters in your life uh, there is a lot of um, karmic energy coming up for you as well energy that will make you remember things from the past things that perhaps were uncomfortable and this will be definitely the case with saturn in aries transit which will be uh, between my may the 25th and september the 1st Bear in mind, it's just a really, really, really tiny influence because Saturn will only reach the first degree of uh, Aries in 2025. It will come into uh, move into Aries uh, properly, more permanently, 2026. But overall, with Saturn and Aries in your 12th house, this is about having to face some uncomfortable uh, memories, truths, and generally reassessing them, reevaluating them, and putting them to rest accepting that you can't change the past but you can make better decisions moving forward best based on the past experiences so i think there's a lot of karmic endings with this transit and at the same time neptune here will make you very very spiritually inclined lots of dreamy energy lots of spiritual creative energy an amazing time for doing creative things for getting involved in charity work volunteering uh, in arts, creative arts as well. And um, this could be also a time when you might want to get engaged in, in, in charity work, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Now, also in 2025, uh, Jupiter will move into Cancer. So in the first six months, uh, around about six months, uh, Jupiter will be in. Then in uh, June, on June the 9th, it will move into Cancer where it will remain until June the 30th of 2026. So June, Jupiter in Cancer feels fantastic. Jupiter in Cancer will be a really fun transit. So that's your fourth, that's your third house, that's your third house. So what this means is that uh, you'll be craving more spacious surroundings, traveling more, perhaps your home might be abroad, at least temporarily. So there's an element of something foreign, whether you moving into a foreign land, or traveling more frequently during the duration of this transit. Uranus will be in Gemini also in 2025 from July the 7th until November the 8th. So here again, those really fine, that's really fine first degree, the first, second degree of Gemini. And this is uh, this is your second house. So it looks like you will be undergoing changes in your area of finances. So this is actually my natal placement, uh, Uranus uh, in the second house. And with Uranus in the second house, uh, money comes in and out. There is generally instability 
So you need to watch your finances. Budgeting, financial planning is essential because money comes in and out unexpectedly. Oh, there could be amazing opportunity uh, that come, uh, come up during this time. But at the same time, there could be some surprising expenses. So you need to be prepared for generally for a more of an adaptable approach when it comes to managing your finances. And um, with Jupiter, uh, with Uranus in the second house, I think this could be also connected to different ways uh, to, to deal with money, to earn money. This could be about working remotely, working online, uh, working on your own terms, or uh, perhaps uh, having a side hustle, for example. There is an element of something um, connected to technology, media as well. That's why I'm mentioning uh, working online, for example. But at the same time, there's a lot of rebellious energy, energy that wants you to do things your own way on your own terms as well. We've got three proper Mercury retrograde this year as well, mainly in fire signs, uh, Aries, Sagittarius and Leo. So this would be, of course, your fourth house your 8th house and your 12th house. So lots of introspective energy. So I think 2025 uh, gives you a little flavor of uh, that introspective energy with uh, both uh, Saturn and Neptune moving into your 12th house. Uh, you've got Venus retrograde in your t uh, 12th house. You also have Mercury retrograde uh, in your 12th house. So lots of energy that really wants you to look, um, go within and reevaluate your life. And you will be questioning your the direction you're heading towards. You will be questioning the decisions that uh, you, uh, you want to uh, make. So generally, this is definitely a year to connect it to self-improvement, self-development, self-discovery. But at the same time, this is a year when you will start to uh, close some major doors, chapters in your life as you gradually, gradually, gradually prepare for Saturn transit into your first house into Taurus. But that won't happen for another three years. But here, things generally take time and nothing happens overnight. So here with in 2025, you, this is just the beginning of, of um, this um, brand new phase you're entering. But the phase that will also be connected to you having to close some chapters, you having to move away, shift away from outdated ways of living, habits, routines, responsibilities as well. All right, so here we go, Taurus. Thank you very much. I wish you a productive year and until the next time.